Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Al Faisal University Whiteboard, where your fellow medical students will try to help you with any topic of your choice. I'm Isa Ashworth, and this lecture is about bacterial structure and classification. So we'll be talking about bacterial cell structure and classification in this video. So these are three tools we use to classify bacteria, gram stain, their morphology or shape, and their biochemical characteristics. So these are two cells, two bacterial cells, and the one on the right is going to be a gram positive cell. I'll just make it like that. And the one on the left is a gram negative cell. So what are the differences between them? So the round circle is their plasma membrane, and then that green thing on the outside is their cell wall. So on the right, you can see the bacteria has a much thicker cell wall. This is a gram-positive bacteria. The cell wall is made of peptidoglycan. It's made by an enzyme called transpeptidase, or penicillin-binding protein. That's because this enzyme is attacked by penicillins, which uh, inhibit formation of the wall. And so gram-positives can be attacked by penicillins. Um, also, the thick cell wall prevents stain from the gram stain from leaving the cell, which is why these bacteria stain blue and we call them gram positive. And also, the cell wall in gram positive bacteria has lipotechoic acid, which is an antigenic structure and will stimulate antibodies against the bacteria. So, outside the cell wall, what do we have? In gram negative, we have an, another membrane, it's called the outer membrane. and we need to remember two important things about it. Firstly, it prevents antibiotics from attacking the cell wall, so penicillins won't work against gram negatives. And secondly, it has a molecule in it called lipopolysaccharide. And lipopolysaccharide, from its name, is a lipid and a polysaccharide. It's called an endotoxin. It's released when the gram negative cell dies, and it will stimulate inflammatory cytokines in the body, such as TNF alpha and interleukin 1 and it can result in systemic inflammation or shock. That is, endotoxin is only found in gram-negative bacteria. So that's one mechanism bacteria cause disease. Another mechanism is by secreting um, enzymes which destroy the extracellular environment, and these are called exotoxins. Now, what's the difference between exotoxins and endotoxins? Well, exotoxins are proteins, and they're secreted by the bacteria, whereas endotoxins are lipopolysaccharide and they're only released on cell death. Okay, so outside the outer membrane in the gram negative or outside the cell wall in gram positive, there's another structure called a capsule. Now, the capsule is made up of polysaccharide. Its function is to prevent phagocytosis of the cell, so it's a virulence factor. Uh, you need to remember one exception, which is in Bacillus anthracis, the uh, capsule is made of amino acids, specifically deglutamate. You need to remember that for step one. So something similar to the capsule, but it's excreted into the environment by some bacteria, and this is called a biofilm or glycocalyx. It's also made of polysaccharides. It helps the bacteria uh, stick to stuff such as prosthetics and one bacteria that produces it is staph epidermidis. So these are structures outside the cell. So inside the cell we have uh, double-stranded uh, DNA in a single circle. That's the main DNA for the bacteria. And then it has plasmids and these are smaller double-stranded uh, DNA circles. And two things about plasmids is one, they carry antibiotics resistance genes and two, they can be transferred between bacteria. And that's how resist resistance um, spreads. Um, the third in intracellular structure is ribosomes. In bacteria, it's 70S. Uh, it's made up of two subunits, 50S, which can be attacked by erythromycin, and 30S, which can be attacked by tetracycline. Now we've talked about how the gram-positive and gram-negative cells are different. Uh, we'll talk about their morphology, how bacteria have different shapes and how we can classify them based on that. So these are the different shapes bacteria can have. 
if they're just round balls, we call them cocci. If you have two of these cocci, it's called diplococci. If they're arranged like grapes in a cluster, it's called staphylococcus. If it's arranged in a string, it's called streptococcus. It can also be in a rod shape, it can be in a comma shape or spiral shaped. So we'll classi first we classify them based on whether they're gram positive or gram negative or they don't stain with a gram stain. And then after that we'll classify them based on their shape. Okay, so gram positive, there are seven um, clinically important bacteria you need to know. There's more, but just remember these seven. So three of them are cocci, and they all have coccus in the name, staphylococcus, streptococcus, and enterococcus. And four of them are rods, okay? Uh, two of these rods, they form spores, and these are bacillus and clostridium. The way I remember it is back in the closet. I just made that up, so it hides back in a spore or back in the closet. And back would be bacillus and closet would be clostridium. And then the two rods that don't form spores are listeria and chorine bacterium. And these guys are crying hysterically because they can't form spores. Crying is chorine and hysteria is listeria. So gram negative. Two of them are diplococci, uh, Neisseria and Morgzella. Three are comma-shaped, H. pylori, Campylobacter, and Vibrio. The rest of them are rods or pleomorphic, and from the rods you need to know these important bacteria, um, H. influenza, Brucella, and Bordetella. Now some bacteria, they don't stain, either gram-positive or gram-negative, so remember at least three of them. There's mycobacteria, like mycobacterium tuberculosis, and this we stain it with an acid fast stain. We have mycoplasma, mycoplasma, I remember it from its name, mycoplasma means it just has a plasma membrane, it doesn't have a cell wall. And thirdly, we have spirochetes. Now spirochetes are actually gram negative, but they're too small to be seen, so use dark field microscopy and uh, trypanema is an example of a spirochete. So now we've classified bacteria based on their gram stain and on their morphology. Let's classify them based on their metabolic characteristics. So basically when we talk about that we, we mean how they deal with oxygen. Uh, when bacteria or any cell uses oxygen, reactive oxygen species are produced as a byproduct, specifically hydrogen peroxide and superoxide. And you need to have enzymes to deal with this. Now, bacteria, they have three kinds of enzymes. Um, they have catalase. This deals with hydrogen peroxide. It neutralizes it. Peroxidase deals with hydrogen peroxide from the name. And superoxide dismutase deals with superoxide. So if bacteria have all three of these enzymes, they're going to be fine with oxygen, and we call these obligate aerobes. If they don't have any of these enzymes, uh, they can't tolerate oxygen or reactive oxygen species, we call them obligate anaerobes. So bacteria are either at these two ends or they'll be somewhere in between. They'll have one or two enzymes. So your obligate aerobes, the bacteria that have all three enzymes, uh, examples are Neisseria, Pseudomonas, and Legionella. Some bacteria only have two enzymes, catalase and superoxide dismutase. We call these facultative anaerobes. They actually usually live in oxygen, but they can live by uh, fermentation. Example of this is Staphylococcus. Now, Staphylococcus, we call it catalase positive. So next are bacteria that only have one enzyme, superoxide dismutase. These are called microaerophilic, and since they don't have catalase, we can call them catalase negative. Examples are streptococcus and enterococcus. Now you know that streptococcus is catalase negative, and staphylococcus is catalase positive. Okay, and lastly are the bacteria that don't have any of these three enzymes. They obligate anaerobes. 
examples are gut bacteria, such as bacteroids, and clostridium. Thanks for watching, and see you in our next video about gram positives.